What's up everyone, welcome back to Saintsy Awakening. It's been a while since the last character review, but we finally have a new character in the game. It's the Underworld Commander Pandora. And today we're going to look at all of her skills, her Cosmo, her teams, because she is a very versatile unit that allows for some of the craziest combos in the game, including a way to pretty much win in turn one, which has never been possible before. Commander Pandora is a unit that fulfills two functions in a team. The first one is going to be as a sort of control, although she's really expensive for just control, and the other one is as a damage booster, which is the really fun way to use her. Her skills are not overly complicated, so let's take them from the top, starting with Dark Halberd, which is a regular cosmic damage type individual attack. It does a little bit of damage, and then it does additional damage if the target is a Bane. What the heck is a Bane? That's what we do with the second skill. This is what allows her to be a sort of control unit with a cost of four energy. When you use this skill on a target, it's very very easy to think that you're transforming that target into this bane which is like a summon but that's not actually what happens what happens is that you exile that target completely from the battlefield in its place this bane appears and it behaves as an enemy unit it will play part of the enemy's team when he's summoned he's going to inherit hp and attack from the unit that you banished and he'll stay on the battlefield until one of three different things happen if he stays for two rounds then he'll disappear after the second round if he's killed if he loses all of the hp that he inherited he will disappear as well or if commander pandora takes a certain amount of damage Damage, then he'll disappear as well. There's three different ways to get rid of him. Now before that happens he is going to be behaving as an enemy unit and he has three skills available. Two of them are active and one of them is a passive. The first skill is a basic, it's what he's going to use as default when there's no energy available. It's a simple individual attack. The second one, Bane Havoc, is an active skill that will cost the enemy team two energy. And this is very important to keep in mind, this will be an enemy unit. So besides controlling the unit that you exile, you can also spend energy on the enemy team because the Bane, if he's active and he has the two energy, he's going to consume them. The third skill is a passive, and this is what makes Pandora so interesting. When this Bane is on the battlefield, any damage that he takes is going to be applied to the rest of the team as well. If you deal 10,000 damage to the Bane, all of the enemy team is going to take 10,000 damage as well. Now why is this amazing? Because it allows for example AoE attacks to take effect on the entire team twice. Let's take for example Saga. He's gonna do his Galaxian Explosion, he's going to apply damage to everyone, and the damage that he applied to the Bane is going to be reproduced again on the entire enemy team, so it's like like attacking twice. Now there is a limit to this damage otherwise individual skills like Sagittarius Arrow would just be insane. You would kill the Bane and then that same amount of damage would get applied to the whole team. It would be crazy. The limit to this damage is the Bane's HP and because he only inherits part of the HP from the unit that you exile then that limit is much lower than the full HP of a unit. So let's use another example. Let's say you banish somebody that has 100,000 HP. The Bane on max level is only going to inherit 40% so that's 40,000 HP. That is the maximum amount of damage that you can apply to the Bane and therefore can apply to the rest of the team. So even if you shoot the Bane with a Sagittarius arrow that does, I don't know, 200,000 damage, you're only gonna apply 40,000 and that 40,000 to the rest of the team. The last condition here is that when the Bane dies, he's going to choose the unit on his team, on the enemy's team, with the highest attack and he's going to increase the energy consumption of that unit. They increase his two energy and it lasts for two rounds. And that's really the only complicated part. The third skill, Darkness Punishment, is an individual cosmic type attack. It has a pretty mediocre multiple but it will deal additional damage if your target has lost HP. It's kind of the opposite of Daffodil, which will deal additional damage if you have lost HP. In this case, it's a skill that you would use to finish off enemies, because if they've already lost HP, then you're going to deal more damage to them. This damage also ignores shield effects, so it's very good, again, to get rid of pesky units that are already kind of low. The fourth skill, called Void Field, is her only passive, and it's basically just a shield. It's not very complicated when she attacks enemy units, she's going to gain a shield based on that attack, and the shield is limited by her maximum HP. HP. It's a decent skill, but most of the time you're going to be using the Bane if you have the energy, so it really doesn't come into play that much. You would have to deal a massive amount of damage to get a decent shield. When it comes time to scale her up, she's fortunately one of the less expensive units we've gotten in a while. The basic Pandora has the skill levels as I have her right now, which is 1512. This is so we can get the maximum HP inheritance on the Bane, and this will raise the limit of damage that we can apply to it and therefore the rest of the team. So this one definitely I recommend taking to level 5, and then the fourth one I took to level 2 basically so I could open the 8 cents. This is only 11 tomes and you can already use her for all the disgusting combos. Now if you do want to go higher, the next recommended levels are 1515. This gives you the maximum Bane and it also gives you the maximum shield. If you're going all out for Commander Pandora, then you would go to 1555. That's 30 tomes, but I really don't know if it's worth it unless you're a super high level competitor, you're in the finals of Jameer, and you know this damage might make the difference between winning or losing. 
over on the 8 cents and keeping in mind that you're going to be using her in PvP a lot, you're going to want to open everything, but in her case, it's important that she survives, so I would start with Beta with HP and status resistance, then Delta with HP and resistance to both types of damage, followed by Gamma, which has Cosmo attack and P crit resistance, very important so she can't get one shot, and lastly Alpha, which just gives her Cosmo attack and a little bit more HP. Her Cosmo is also very flexible, you really just want speed and HP on her so she can move fast, transform someone and then stay alive long enough. Ideally on the Solar you would go with either Flower Ring or Chalice. This gives you the biggest speed boost if you have speed substats, which I didn't have when I equipped her so I went with White Mist. It gives you a lot of defense, some cosmic damage resistance and I had speed substats. In the Lunar Cosmo pretty much anything will work, although as we've mentioned recently Spirit Print and the Cross are just extremely popular because of the amount of resistance to damage that they give you. But again, it's gonna be a matter of finding the substats that you need. If you don't have speed or HP in either one of those, then the classic options of Tenacity, Bloom, even Dual Defense will work. In the Blue Cosmo, as always, the biggest speed boost comes from New Moon, but if you have a lot of substats, if you have really, really incredible Cosmo, you could sacrifice a little bit of that speed and go with Gardenia. You get 29 less speed, but it also gives you a lot of HP and again, Cosmic Damage Resistance to protect against Mew, Cannon, etc. In the Legendary, the focus is going to be speed again, so go with something with a speed sub attribute, and it's it's also a good idea to get her some resistance to damage, that can be in the form of Mandala, which decreases all of the damage by 15%, or if you want to go balls to the wall all out, you could go with Iris, it gives you a speed substat as well, and 10 speed for the rest of your team. Now substats like we already mentioned, we're going to be looking for speed, we're going to be looking for HP, defense, resistance if you can find it, but speed and HP are your primary focus. Moving on to teams, this is a unit whose main skill costs 4 energy, so we're gonna have to get energy from somewhere. We can either generate it with Gemini Cannon, with Athena or Kiki, or we can reduce her cost using Artemis. If you're gonna do that, you need to use Hunter Mode. For her damage increase, like we mentioned, AoE attacks go really, really well. Saga is a character that works amazingly with her. You can pretty much delete everything in turn 1. And there's another super disgusting combo, which uses Saga's brother, the old Sea Dragon Cannon. Now this guy with his triangle, we we had already seen the mechanic of increasing damage with certain combos, you can actually combine this thing with Pandora's Bane and trigger everything in the first round, pretty much wiping out the entire enemy team. It's the first time I think that a combo has been available in the game that can win turn 1, or at least on the first attack in turn 2. It's really incredibly strong, I'm gonna show you in the demonstration today in case you haven't seen it yet, and that combo is gonna rely on Shijima as an attacker because he's a unit that can do an enormous amount of cosmic damage with just his basic. Other than that, if you're just gonna use her as a plane control unit, it, then you're gonna want to bring units with a low energy consumption. She's gonna be eating four of that energy, so there's not gonna be a lot left for the rest of your team. Again, you can pair her up with Artemis and this time use the Brilliance mode. You bring Gemini Cannon as well, and that's more than enough energy to get the Bane off and do all the basics with the Artemis Brilliance. Her weaknesses in the game are gonna be, first and foremost, that energy consumption. Nowadays, a unit that eats up four energy, it really limits the teams that you can bring her in, but on the other hand, we do have now three units that can generate energy. At the start of the game, it was only Kiki, so you really couldn't get away with a lot of stuff. Now you can bring Athena, Kiki, Gemini Cannon, and there's Artemis with energy reduction as well, so it's not as complicated as it used to be. The second weakness is that she's a little bit squishy, even though she has really decent stats. For some reason, she tends to die very easily. Maybe it's because we have to focus so much on the speed. It doesn't leave a lot of room for survivability substats, so bring some protection that doesn't use a lot of energy, like Divine Shun or Shion Sapuri. The last weakness for pulling off combos is Control. Control is the number one enemy of all combos in the game. It affects this one just as bad or probably worse, especially if you're trying to do the Pandora Dragon Cannon combo, just one single unit of control in the enemy team can completely disrupt it. Now as far as where we can use her in the game, she's amazing for PvP, but she's actually quite useful for PvE as well. I've been using her in Athena Trial, she could be useful in the individual tomes to pass the story in dungeons. That damage increase that she can do with AoE attacks is awesome at beating hard levels. We're gonna do a demonstration right now, and the team that we're gonna use is that super- maybe we do two fights because this team is too quick. We're gonna use the super combo with Pandora, Dragon Cannon, and Shijima. I'll show you quickly all of the Cosmo and stats that we're gonna be using for this. Artemis is going to be on Mandala. I also sometimes run her with Marsh Fairy, but in this case I don't need to because Athena is my carrier. Cannon has his standard configuration with Equinox. Pandora, as we saw, is on Mandala as well. To reduce the enemy, this is more for like PvP battles. Here we're gonna be fighting on auto. Sea Dragon Cannon has uh, Dragon Teeth, while Shijima is equipped with Vulcan Chain because we're going for maximum damage on the very first attack. For him, I also worked on the basic skill, so I have a 100% chance to apply the Ongyo, and I also get a little bit more damage. Now, if he keeps behaving well, maybe I'll go to level 5 on this one someday. 
Today we're going to be fighting Junior, which is running a pretty standard arena defense. It has Cannon, Hades, Thanatos, a lot of the usual suspects. If everything goes well, we should win at the end of turn 1, or no, rather at the start of turn 2. Alright, here we go, and I'm going to put it on speed 1, and I'm going to do my biggest effort to explain everything that's going to happen here very carefully. Okay, we're gonna start with Artemis and we said we're going to use Hunter mode. This is to reduce the energy consumption of Pandora, otherwise we won't have enough energy for the whole combo, right? So I'm gonna select Hunter, I am going to give the energy reduction to Pandora and I don't think I have to hide anyone, I think it should be okay. Uh, with Cannon, we're not gonna use the big skill, all we're gonna do is a basic. We pretty much just bring him as a generator, as an energy generator. The enemy cannon is attacking, and here in the following movements, what I'm going to do is generate energy with my Athena as well. This would take me to 8 energy, which is more than enough. And the reason that this combo works so, so well is you have 2 energy left at the end of the turn. But if you're fighting an Artemis with Brilliance that cancels some of your energy generation, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have enough energy to pull it off. Now, we said with cannon, we're just going to do a basic pew pew. And I'm kind of hoping this works because I wouldn't want to have to repeat everything again. The enemy Athena generates, I can speed this up a little bit. Hades is going to start his contract, okay? So, we're going to see another of the functions as Pandora. We're going to see the damage increase and we're also going to see the control because we're going to get rid of this contract. With my Athena, I'm going to generate energy even though I have way too much. So I'm just going to poke, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to poke the enemy Athena. Now, with Pandora, there's something that is extremely important. You have to use the skill, or you have to try to use the skill on the enemy unit with the most HP. Because remember, there's a limit to the damage that you can do, and that limit is the enemy's HP. Now, Hades is usually a tanky unit. In this case, I can also get rid of the contract. So I'm going to go ahead and exile him. This means he's going to come back later. I'm not getting rid of him. I'm just kind of replacing him temporarily with this disgusting little, uh, what is it called? A Bane. And Hades just goes to chill out somewhere else. I am going to triangle. I have to triangle... I think Shion, because he moves after my Shijima. It has to be somebody that moves after Shijima. I can't triangle Thanatos, even though it would be really nice to kill him. And if that Shion has Resurrection Tree, I don't know. I can't remember if it triggers the damage or not. But it doesn't matter. Here comes Shijima's turn, and here's what's going to happen. I am going to apply damage to the Bane. The damage that I apply to that Bane is going to get applied to the rest of the team as well. And all of that cosmic damage is going to be applied to the triangle, okay? So it's like a triplication, <laughs> I don't know if that's a word, it's a triplication of damage. Then when Shion moves, he's going to explode, that triangle is going to apply all the damage, he's gonna die, and the excess of damage should get applied to the rest of the team as well. Now, I can't slow it down any more than it already is, here comes the attack. Then comes the Ungio damage, then goes the damage to the rest of the team, then Xion comes out of the triangle, and boom. Now, the only reason there are still enemies here is because stupid Hades didn't die. Because here's what happens. The Bane dies, right? We kill the Bane. Then the enemy that we had exiled returns to the battlefield. Then the triangle applies the damage, and so Hades takes damage. Now, over here, on the first move with Artemis, I might have enough energy to actually kill this Hades right here. Uh, not enough energy, no, almost. Not quite enough damage, but it was very close. The enemy cannon moves, and I think I can speed this up now. Uh, zero damage on my Artemis, hello, because Artemis actually cancels all damage after she uses her attack, which is gross. I'm gonna keep going on this Hades, because if I can kill Hades, all of the ghosts disappear as well. Oh, this Hades is so annoying, but you know what? I can actually, I have enough energy to execute him. So all ghosts are going to go bye-bye. Hades goes bye-bye, Shion stays, but now all I have to do is kill this pesky little Gemini cannon. Which we're very close to doing, he hides it. Oh my god, these teams are disgusting, bro. Now, wait. Oh, I can't target him, but I can reset this guy. <laughs> Wait, let's reset Shion, we get rid of him, but look, my team is, is whole. They have been pretty much unable to attack my team this whole time. He's still going for Artemis. Uh, the shadow can't fall asleep, so I'm just gonna finish it here. You can't hide anymore, Cannon. Just die. This combo is insane, and it works in PvP as well, if there's no control. 
that was really fast. I think we can do one more fight. So I'm just going to pick the leftmost guy here. I'm going to do challenge and I'm going to show you a combo without dragon cannon. I'm going to go, I'm going to bring Saga, my Saga in this case. It works pretty similarly, except we're not going to need this guy. I am going to bring my Saga instead of him. We don't need Shijima as well, or do we? No, I don't think we need Shijima. We can go for it with a Thanatos for insurance. And let me see, do we have enough energy? I think we have, we have more than enough energy. Don't we? Yeah, that's plenty. You know what? I'm going to go safe. I'm going to go with an excess of energy rather than not enough. All right. Again, I'm going to use Hunter and I am going to reduce the energy consumption of Pandora here. With Cannon, uh, we can just do a basic again. Maybe start bringing the Shun a little bit lower. With Athena, I generate. But, well, you know what? We're going to have so much energy. We can actually use Thanatos the strong attack not that we need to and in this case this is amazing because we're fighting a shiryu a divine shiryu that has usually a massive amount of hp the only problem is that pandora is usually faster so you don't get to take advantage of the extra hp that he gets when he uh, activates his protection but okay i'm gonna go with this i am going to exile shiryu turn him into a bane with this guy i am going to mark if i mark thanatos you know what i'm just gonna go with shun all right trying to bring him back a little bit lower, make sure that we get rid of him when we apply the damage with Saga. Uh, Thanatos goes on my cannon, there's the protection, and here goes my Saga's attack. Now I'm going to bring the speed down, and again, what's going to happen is, we're going to apply the AoE damage to the whole team, and then the damage that we did to the Bane is going to be reapplied to the whole enemy team. So we should see almost everything die. Now, there's a lot of protection, so Thanatos is going to be here annoying us. I don't know if Milo is going to die, and the exiled unit is... Oh my god, the, <laughs> the exiled unit, I think, comes back. Yeah, yeah, Shiryu comes back. His Thanatos explodes, my Thanatos explodes. His Milo is hanging by a thread. Uh, he hides his Shion. Wow, his PC is so smart. Stop it, stop it! You abusive... Um, what do we do here? Do we go for damage? I don't think we can kill. Maybe we... I'm, I'm not sure what to do. I'm gonna go with damage. Oh, maybe we could have done damage to this Thanatos. Look at this. I can execute the Shiryu. If I don't use the energy with cannon... Yeah, I'm not gonna use the energy with cannon. I'm just gonna spend some of these shields. And uh, I can execute Shiryu. So Shiryu goes bye-bye. But unfortunately now, I don't have enough energy for Saga. I can't actually Saga again. I'm gonna keep spending these shields uh, with my Thanatos. I'm going to go for this. And I'm not sure actually if we're gonna be able to win or not. Okay, okay, Thanatos explodes. Please kill Milo. Thank you, bro. Thank you very much. That's a good Thanatos obeys his master's command. And now it's just... Shion Sapuri is still there annoying the crap out of us. Uh, Athena says bye-bye. I'm going to apply damage with Artemis. And that's it. Shion Sapuri's left holding down the fort, but we all know it's almost impossible for him to pull off a fight if there's a lot of enemy units left. One more attack. One more attack. Her attack also costs zero energy, which is pretty cool. The Shion will not let this video end. Oh, there we go. So that's it, guys. That is the Underworld Commander Pandora review. She is a really, really cool unit, allows for some insane combos, and she's not that costly. Only 11 tomes, and you can get that performance out of her. The only important thing is to get that Bane skill to level 5 so that you maximize the amount of damage that you can do. After that, it's just a matter of getting creative, come up with some new combos, or use these same combos that I just showed you. Keeping in mind, though, that all combos have the same weakness, which is control. If the enemy disrupts your sequence of events in any way, the combo will die. That's gonna be it for me for today. If you haven't already, please remember to hit like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell so you don't miss any videos, and I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye!